We were asked to make our remarks in response to the Great Commission. That moment is referred to in each gospel, but is often the case in different ways. The Gospel of Mark is unique, particularly for us as we consider Earth Sunday. Because the Gospel reads, come into worship, come and pray, go into the world and preach the Gospel to the whole creation, to the whole creation. I've been reading a lot of late of uh, Julian of Norwich, a 14th century woman, really a woman for our time. It's funny how history calls forth these prophets. She was the first woman to have a book published in English. It was from Julian that we get the understanding of God that makes reference to God as mother and father. And Julian, who wrote these words, God has created all that is made. God loves all that she, mother, and he, father, created. And so anyone who loves God loves all our fellow creatures, loves all that is. God is inside us, and God is inside everything. Whoever loves God loves all that is. Now my challenge throughout all of my ministry, and I'm not the only one speaking here. I'll make reference to them when I finish as I introduce Sue and Art. But during my ministry, the real task as I reflect is how to help people see the sacredness. And to that end, I conclude my remarks with this poem, which I wrote an attempt to say what poetry always does, say what can't be said. And isn't that the task of the preacher? So here's the sermon, uh, the, uh, <laughs> here is the poem. I call it seeing. Seeing beauty in every living thing. Longing in every cell, longing. Swamp maples ablaze in autumn as leaves of fire fall in wind-blown flames to mulch springs be birthing. Conversations made holy while waiting for a flight or resting on a park bench, choosing to listen and trust. Seeing Betsy on Telegraph Avenue in Berkeley Wheeling belongings, two dogs peeking through unbuttoned openings in her tattered coat. On her way to spend the night on church steps. Let her in. She's Jesus. Maine. A monarch wrestles, emerges, stretches to fly to Mexico. To fly to Mexico. California, a giant sequoia embraced, whispers ageless wisdom. Listen. Moonlight, moonless night, midnight silence, stars, stars, stars. Stars that cast a carpet of shadows across the range. It's creation calling. Love me. Sue Inches, well known to many of you, friend of mine for many years, has written a book called Advocating for the Environment, How to Gather Your Power and Take Action published by North Atlantic Books, and it's coming out July 7th. We'll want it. We'll want to read it. We'll want to learn from it. Art Bell, known and beloved by so many of us, has just been elected and now with environmental priorities 
is our representative in the state legislature. I'm so proud of Art and so glad to call him a friend. Good morning and good Earth Day. Earth Day is a celebration of God's love for the earth. Psalm 65 is a wonderful poem about how God provides a rich abundance, an abundance of water, abundance of food, and abundance of joy. But my question today is, are we loving the earth back? I've been thinking a lot about this question. For if we truly love the earth, would we be dumping tons of plastics into the ocean? If we truly love the earth, would we be allowing poisonous chemicals, 60,000 of them, to be manufactured and distributed every year? If we truly love the earth, would we spew tons of methane and CO2 into the air, altering the climate? Jesus told us to love our neighbors, but if we truly love them, would we locate hydraulic fracking and petroleum refineries in their backyards? On this Earth Day, we need to examine all we do and see if it conforms to Jesus' message to love one another. With COVID receding, we now have an enormous opportunity to recreate our economy and our politics in a way that affirms life. I have a vision where all life on Earth is respected, revered, and nurtured. In this vision, no race, class, gender, or any group of people is judged to be better or worse than another. In this vision, the Earth's natural ecosystems are thriving, and all people have access to clean water, nutritious food, and safe housing. In this vision, the world economy serves people equitably. It is based on providing goods and services that people need, and corporations are responsible for cleaning up any pollution or harm they create. People of faith are in a unique position to lead the way to this vision. We know who Jesus is and that he taught us to love all of life. But it will take all of us, each of us, putting our faith into action in order to achieve it. It means considering the earth in every decision we make. Do we consider the earth when we travel? while shopping, in business decisions? Do we reach out and contact decision makers in opposition to harmful practices? Do we support and encourage initiatives that protect the earth? Each of us has a story of how we were awakened to God's love for the earth. For me, the story took place when I was about eight years old. There was a beautiful stream running through the woods in back of my house. I love to play there with my friends. One day we went out to play, but the stream had turned an ugly shade of orange. The water was so opaque that you couldn't see the bottom of the foot deep stream. We went home and told our parents. They did nothing. From that day on, I promised to take a stand for the earth and halt destructive practices like the large development that had polluted our stream. There is power in your earth story too. On this Earth Day, I urge you to connect with your own Earth story, to remember or find that place where you and the Earth come together. There is power in our collective Earth story, too. My great hope is that we create a story where in the 2020s, we came to respect and honor the Earth and began to treat the Earth like a precious gift from God, which it is. For it is up to us, the people of faith, whether in the streets, in the halls of power, with our cell phones, emails, and social media, to demand an economy and culture that honors the earth. We must commit our time, our creativity, our financial resources, and our prayers to protecting God's earth and all life on it. It is urgent. Please join me in doing all you can to love and protect the earth. Amen. We need to learn from our youth. They can feel the heat of our warming climate, and they can see the impact that climate change is having on our Earth. In September of 2019, young Greta Thunberg of Sweden rallied the youth of the world into a student-led climate strike. 
I observed students from Yarmouth High School who were passionate and committed participants. And just this past month, I witnessed young Senator Chloe Maxman introduce a bill for consideration in the Maine legislature called the Pine Tree Amendment, essentially a bill of rights amending our Maine Constitution to guarantee all Maine people the right to clean water, fresh air, and a healthy environment. Senator Maxman told of growing up in Maine, being outdoors, breathing the clean air, drinking the water from the backyard, and eating the berries growing in the surrounding fields. Now that she is back in Maine after college, having seen the world that we have created, she is committed that we must make it right again. We need to listen to these young people. We are all in this together. Our Christian beliefs call us to be earth stewards. We must hear and act upon that call. On behalf of the First Parish Church Earth Stewardship Ministry, I would like to challenge our young people here at First Parish Church and beyond to teach us. Tell us your view of global warming and how we should be cleaning and dealing with our earth. What should we be doing differently? Teach us to do right by our planet Earth. We look forward to hearing from you.